If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. With standard symmetrical all-wheel drive plus up to 33 miles per gallon, an available 260 horsepower turbocharged engine, advanced technology, and an available extra-large touchscreen. The best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Please. It's all good. It's all good. All right, so welcome to Quiet Adventure Symposium, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in to our presentation, uh, Baby Steps to Big Adventures. Um, I'm Nick. This is my wife, Taryn. Uh, we just had our first son, Warren. Uh, he's a little over a year old. Uh, we're going to be talking today about all of our experiences we've had, uh, taking him hiking, camping, backpacking, biking, uh, a lot of different things, kind of sharing what's worked with us and what hasn't. Um, so if you're thinking about having kids soon or you just recently had kids, uh, this is the presentation for you. So first off, a little bit about us. Uh, my name's Nick Mikoff. Uh, maybe you're a member. I've, I've presented at QAS before on 16 islands in Michigan you've never heard of and should camp on, the Pure Michigan Bucket List, uh, Micro Adventures, How to Find Fun Close to Home, and most recently, Paddling 100 Rivers in Michigan. Uh, in my day job, I work for the Michigan Department of Agriculture. So kind of my day to day, I'm all over the state of Michigan. Uh, I, I visit a lot of farms and on my lunch break, I do a lot of hikes. Um, most importantly, I'm a husband to Taryn, uh, father to Warren and embracer of all things outdoors. Uh, if you're interested, I uh, my Instagram page is pure Michigan guy. Uh, so I post a lot of pictures of outdoorsy things there. And my name's Taryn Borst and I'm a longtime uh, I don't need my notes to introduce myself, but I'm going to look at them anyway. I'm a longtime Quiet Adventure Symposium uh, attendee. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm very nervous, and I'm usually kind of more in the background of these presentations. Um, uh, and I'm very excited to talk to you guys today. Um, the wife to Nick and mother to Warren. Um, and I work uh, in the daytime at uh, Copes Incorporated as a HR uh, generalist. So, and then our son Warren Mikoff is uh, 15 months old. He's our first child. You'll be seeing a lot of photos of him. We had a lot of fun making this presentation. Uh, you're seeing the deep cut. So, there's so, more pictures where that came from. We apologize for the gratuitous shots of Warren. So. Yeah, he's a really cute baby and very bald. So, you can look for that. Uh, so, a few caveats before we get into things. Um, uh, we're very new to this. Uh, we only have one kid. He's our first, and he is a little over a year old. So, unfortunately, we can't speak to the experiences or logistics of, uh, you know, anyone who has multiple kids or older kids. We'll get there, and we're excited to get there, but uh, we can only talk about what we know thus far. Um, another thing, uh, always consult your pediatrician. You know, we're obviously not experts. We talk to our pediatrician all the time, you know, questions like how much how how long can he be outside in the winter? You know, uh, what various questions What's like that. What's too cold? What's too much sun? All exactly. So um, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are who you should be talking to about uh, a lot of this stuff. But hopefully you can gain a lot from our perspective. Uh, last but not least, all babies are different, uh, different temperaments. Um, just be willing to be flexible and take advantage of the opportunities you're given. And uh, as the Borst family motto states, try new things often. So here's a few uh, general considerations. These kind of apply to all activities. Uh, whatever you do, start small. Uh, hike a half mile, set up a tent in the backyard, stick to local trails. Uh, don't set your expectations too high or invest too much effort into your uh, first excursions. You know, it's not worth driving two hours away or planning a four day backpacking trip if you've never done it before. Um, for us, our first hike with Warren was uh, one mile on the North Country Trail in Lowell. Uh, about two weeks after Warren was born. Uh, it was a very flat section and we went very slowly. Um, the second tip I have is uh, um, try new things in, uh, you know, quote unquote secret spots or places with as little traffic as you can. Uh, you know, if you do this, there's no audience. So it kind of eases the anxiety you might feel of, you know, potentially annoying other uh, campers or hikers out there with your bad experiences. Um, you know, nobody likes passing a hiker who's, you know, blasting music on their uh, uh, on their speakers. It's kind of the same thing with a crying baby. Obviously, people are more forgiving of that, but uh, 
when we try to be courteous, we do so by, you know, sticking to the more obscure, lesser known trails so that we're kind of the only ones out there on a section of trail or something. Uh, specifically, we often hit up the North Country Trail. Uh, there's a lot of sections that aren't very popular. Uh, state game areas are great in Southern Michigan. Uh, here in Ottawa County, we have a lot of county open spaces. Uh, those are real nice. And uh, or private land, if you have access to it, um, those are all good options. Uh, we have a dog who prefers to be off leash. That's so kind of a another factor we always have to add into our equation. Um, so we stick to places where uh, she can be off leash legally or on you know really unpopular trails. If you're fortunate to live in Ottawa County like we are, uh, they have a lot of they call them county open spaces, uh, places with trails where dogs are allowed off leash. So we hit those up quite a bit. Um, so kind of like one analogy I give is like, uh, you know, back in my wilder, younger 20s, um, you know, I would be out on bachelor parties or camping trips with the guys where, you know, we'd be drinking lots of beer and just, uh, you know, getting a little louder. And before those trips, we would always intentionally, you know, drive or hike way out as far as we could. So we're at least not bothering any other hikers. There's nobody around to be bothered by our noise. So it's kind of in that same vein. Be courteous to other outdoor users. Uh, try to find a place where you have the woods or the water to yourselves. It'll ease the anxiety over good baby behavior. And uh, if the adventure does turn into a total disaster, uh, you won't have to worry about ruining anyone else's hike. Another big uh, thing that we think and talk a lot with each other about is, uh, um, oh, I'm skipping a bullet, uh, is dressing in layers um, and uh, dressing appropriately for the weather. I uh, always have plenty of backup options, um, but I think a good point is, is uh, hand-me-downs and used gear can really be your friend in a lot of ways. So we buy um, all of Warren's gear really used um, or their hand-me-downs from generous friends. So uh, yeah, I would just highly recommend doing that. That way when you have a backup, it's not uh, expensive backup. Uh, and then I guess a really weird parenting hack and you'll notice in a lot of these pictures as I'm going through I'm noticing that we have a lot of our own coats and like scarves and clothes on Warren um I feel like that comes in handy too is even though he's little you can still kind of wrap him in a an a, a adult winter coat um and it's kind of cute also um so and then uh take your cue from cues from your baby um that's definitely, I think, my role in our as our adventuring pair. Um, uh, Nick tends to um, have a uh, more perseverant spirit than <laughs> I do, um, and so I, I maybe I use the baby as the excuse to turn back, but I'm very attentive to is Warren feeling comfortable or or whatnot, um, and if he's really grumpy, don't hesitate. Like you're not the reason you're doing the outdoor activity is is to have fun uh and if one member of your party is having a really bad time not you know there's no um lack of i guess there's no hit to your pride if you if you turn around um outdoor uh adventures are really about the baby's experience um and uh you might not make it to the overlook or to the river river's edge or waterfall that you wanted to make it to um but i think you'll You'll remember it more fondly in your memory if you didn't didn't push your kid. That being said, highly recommend finding some friends uh, who can uh, swap baby stories with you um, and uh, kind of enjoy the uh, joys and pitfalls and maybe share diapers uh, occasionally if you're in a pinch uh, with. So uh, we've really been very blessed with um, with I guess misery loving company, but also joy. So. Mm -hmm. And then a quick tip on food. Uh, one is when your baby switches to solids, um, the pureed um, pouches are amazing. Uh, we don't have a specific brand that we recommend, but uh, I know they have them at Aldi and Meyer, and they're so useful. And we always have like 12 spares in our backpacks at all times because uh, you can whip it out on the trail. Uh, and Warren can suck those down in uh, record time. I know if you're into making your own food for the baby uh, on Amazon, they have um, pouches that you can fill yourself. So that's also still an option. And then uh, I breastfed Warren. Um, if you breastfeed, I highly recommend uh, getting a cool snapshot. See if you can beat my picture there uh, with that view. Um, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, um, do what you gotta do on a hike. 
I recommend having like a bandana or a scarf for warmth or um, privacy. If you're going on a more popular hike, it's always going to be more easy. Um, it's always going to be easier to feed your baby at the trailhead in the car. Uh, so definitely do that. Um, but if, if the baby gets hungry on the, on the trail, find a good spot to, uh, a pretty spot to feed them where you're comfortable and the baby's comfortable too. And hopefully you have something nice to look at. If you're formula feeding, uh, I also recommend finding a good spot, a pretty spot to uh, feed that baby. So. All right. So now we can finally get into like some uh, specific outdoor activities. We'll kind of go activity by activity and uh, what's worked for us. Uh, we'll start with hiking. Hiking is kind of that natural first adventure. It makes the most sense. Um, obviously, you're essentially just walking in a, na in a nature setting with a kid. Uh, it requires, requires very little technical gear and significantly less preparation uh, than other activities, though still a lot. Uh, like we said earlier, it's always wise to start small, uh, set your expectations low, and choose areas that are less busy. Um, so like I said in a few slides ago, the North Country Trail is a, is a good local option for us. Uh, state game areas are good, county and township parks, nature preserves. Um, <clears throat> If you live in Ottawa County, we mentioned the open spaces are, are good options. Um, and we mentioned this too, uh, you know, setting your expectations low, like uh, you, you're doing this for them. And so don't expect, uh, you know, don't expect to get a whole lot of mileage out of it. Uh, always be kind of cognizant of how far away you are from your car in case you need to get back. Uh, that kind of brings us to our next point is uh, always change the baby before leaving for a hike. Um, Babies can be changed on the trail, but it's not preferable uh, for you and certainly not for the baby. Uh, we generally need to change warrant every like two or three hours. Um, so kind of keep that in mind when you're deciding uh, on a turnaround time or how long you're out for. Um, we always change warrant just in the trunk of our car. Um, that's worked super well for us. Um, I find I like doing that a lot better than, you know, gas station bathrooms or anything. Um, so if you have a hatchback or uh, we've done it in like back seats to work fine too, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, hatchback trunk of a car actually works pretty great. So uh, gear, we've been fortunate to get by on using only two things. Um, when Warren was like zero to four months old, we used what was called a Catan baby wrap. And uh, later on, we'll have a slide about specific gear. We can show you these things, but uh we use that for the first four months, and then ever since, he's kind of graduated to the Osprey Poco Plus backpack. You can see in the right picture there. Um, and uh, honestly, though, this is one topic where everybody and their mother has an equally valid opinion on how to carry a baby. Uh, so feel free to ask around and try a few options and see what you like before buying or investing in something. Okay, so for our advice for camping, uh, car camping would be to get a really big tent. Uh, whatever you have now, double it. We certainly <laughs> did. Uh, I think it's been the first time in my life in which I was able to convince Nick to buy a really big tent and uh, it was very exciting. So, um, yep, now's the time to glamp. Now's not the time to cut back on little luxuries uh, for the for the baby. It'll make your, uh, your stay much more uh, enjoyable. Uh, yeah, we bought a tent that's big enough to put a uh, pack and play. You know, Nick and I is like four t-shirts now that we pack for ourselves on trips. <laughs> and then all of the Warren paraphernalia and our dog and his backpack and um, and just kind of all that et cetera, et cetera stuff that babies tend to travel with. Um, and then we've had a lot of success with Warren sleeping in the pack and play. But we're pretty proud of our uh, laundry basket hack when he was little. I think he was mm -hmm. four months in, in when we took him camping for the first time and it was cold. Um, so, and then. Um, um, another yeah. consideration too, like sometimes we've had Warren just like sleep between us cuddled up. Uh, but that's that too, obviously. You'll want to make sure your baby's old enough to not suffocate. Um, yeah, to be able to handle, you know you know, being around multiple layers and sheets and things like that. So well, once they're old enough, uh, you know, laundry basket, pack and play or between mom and dad works fine too. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, about state parks. Uh, while state parks are kind of known for their family atmosphere and they're very forgiving of crying kids, you kind of expect to hear that at state parks. Taryn and I still kind of prefer the dispersed camping method. We've kind of always preferred that even long before kids. Um, 
so we kind of we kind of like finding our own site and being in the middle of nowhere uh, by ourselves um at least uh for michigan uh between the national the national forest the state forest and the state game areas uh there's plenty of places to disperse camp and disperse car camp uh for free all over michigan and yes that includes the southern lower peninsula um <clears throat> So specifically, uh, this picture on the right here was taken at uh, Langston State Game Area, kind of by Greenville, I think. Uh, and we just kind of scoured Google Maps and then kind of cross-referenced that with an atlas I have. Um, and then we kind of found a nice two-track that led right to a nice spot on the Flat River. Uh, we were able to drive there without four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. And so that was a nice campsite we had right there. Uh, free. We were by ourselves, way out in the woods. It was, it was great. Um, another tip is... Uh, You'll notice Warren's very bundled up in all these pictures. You'll always want to bring a variety of clothes for all temperatures, no matter the season. Uh, that Langston campsite, uh, we went there in like the middle of June, I think, mm -hmm. and it was... Uh, and it was warm, like the whole week it was in the 80s, you know, 60s at night. But nice. then when the weekend happened and... And just, of course, the, the night we go camping, it got down to below freezing that mm -hmm. night. And, uh, you know, thankfully we had enough layers to keep Warren bundled up and... And he slept uh, about as well as he normally does at home, so pretty well. Um, Nick and I did not sleep great. But we <laughs> yeah. were pretty much up watching, you know, you just, we had never gone camping with him before, so we just kind of watched him sleep, like yeah. classic yeah. first-time parents. Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring lots of backups. Um, you never know, depending on how long you're going to be out, uh, how many outfits you might go through. Uh, this past summer, we did a week of camping at Asanique State Forest Campground up by Alpena. And, of course, uh, the day before we left or when we were up there, Warren got a real nasty cold. And he was just kind of a faucet of drool and snot the entire week. And I, it just felt like we were going through, like, four or five outfits every single day. And so we're it's just more. Yeah. grateful we brought lots and lots and lots of backups. So you'll always want to, you know, if you're an ultralight, an ultralight backpacker, got to set that pride aside. And now's the time to bring lots and lots and lots of backups. So. All right, now we can kind of pivot to backpacking. You put uh, biking and camping together and this is what you get. Um, so first off, uh, your baby, you shouldn't try this unless uh, your baby's already had plenty of experience hiking and then also a few nights camping as well uh, before you want to combine those two activities and try this. Uh, again, with all activities, uh, you'll want to start small. Um, so you may have to amend your definition of backpacking. Uh, for me, if getting to your campsite requires a hike uh, in which you carry all your gear on your back, you are backpacking regardless of the distance. Uh, the NCT is a great place to try this because uh, in public land sections, you can hike for as long or as short as you like and set up camp wherever you want for free, uh, whether that's a few hundred feet in or 10 miles. Um, and we do that a lot. Um, even even before Warren, we'll, we'll park the car, uh, we'll hike a few hundred feet to a nice spot that we're aware of, uh, spend one night and hike out. So um, it's, a, it's a great kind of safe, uh, easy first backpacking option with a baby. Um, you'll always want to consider how far away you are from help or from your car. You know, should something go wrong and you or need to leave service. right away? Yeah. Cell service, definitely take that into consideration. Um, whatever you do, you kind of want to build up your, your baby's experience and tolerance so that you kind of know uh, how far you can go in those situations. Uh, we've only ever done single overnighters so far, uh, but if your baby takes a liking to it, might as well go for more. Um, so I, I kind of knocked ultralight campers a little bit, but... Uh, Now's the time to get into it if you are going to backpack. This is kind of where the inverse of the camping experience uh, takes hold. If you're backpacking with a baby, count on more than two thirds of the things you're bringing uh, being for the baby. Um, so when we went to Nord House, for example, uh, the backpack that Warren in is in, and then about half of that other backpack, if not more, is <laughs> all Warren stuff. And then like the remaining bottom of that backpack is a couple items for Taryn and I squeezed together. Some sleeping bags. So basically, um, so yeah, get used to just being minimalist uh, for you and your spouse or you or your partner, and then uh, and then just bring in everything you need for baby. Um, so remember, like they'll need, uh, they still need all the food, uh, lots of diapers, lots of spare clothes, wet wipes, maybe bottles, uh, trash bags for used diapers, uh, a bib, stuff to wash the bib, all that stuff. Uh, there's there's always a lot to think of, you know, when you. When you go anywhere with a kid. Um, 
Uh, especially remember that you'll have to pack out all your used diapers. I think that's a pretty big uh, consideration. A pretty big factor when determining how far and how how far how long you want to carry those things. Me, I really, I really do not enjoy carrying refuse. So, <laughs> uh, so that's kind of the reason why we do. When we have back to backpacked with Warren, it's been pretty short trips because uh, those things can add up pretty quick. Um, last point is, uh, do you have a dog? Uh, if you do, you can always, uh, you know, it's time for the dog to carry their weight. You can see that's our dog Kiwana in those pictures. So uh, Kiwana often carries our food. Um, on one occasion, she carried our beer, but we learned very quickly that was a bad idea because uh, you get a dog carrying beer who likes to run off leash and just bound up and down dunes. <laughs> it's just not a good, uh, not a good experience when you open that and you crack that first cold one. All right, now we'll kind of turn our attention to more winter activities. Uh, so snowshoeing. Um, snowshoeing, my thought on snowshoeing is that unless you're blazing a trail uh, through a foot or more of deep powder, snowshoes are more novelty than practicality. Uh, they are good for traction on ice, like if you're going out on Lake Michigan, but for the most part, uh, or Lake Huron, or Lake Huron uh, they're intended for deep snow. Uh, that being said, you know, snowshoeing is really not that much different from winter hiking. Uh, so kind of the same rules apply for hiking as for snowshoeing. The main difference here is, uh, you know, snowshoeing is kind of seen as a more rugged activity. And whatever you do, you want to make sure you're not doing anything too rugged that you might actually, you know, trip and fall over and, uh, you know, actually, you, know, you don't want the baby tipping over with you. So nothing too slippery, nothing too rugged. Um, and uh, one last thing, if you are going to stage a cute photo along a frozen lake shore with snowshoes, uh, it helps if your baby can sit up. Uh, this photo, I'll admit this just once, uh, was taken about one second before Warren took a nose dive and hit his nose on the ice and it was very sad and he cried and we felt very bad. So kind of going through cross country skiing, uh, luckily we live in Michigan. There's plenty of options for really beautiful uh, flat trails. Uh, that's probably my first caveat is go on an easy trail. Um, uh, starting small, figuring that out um, kind of slowly. I think we only went on like maybe a 30 minute uh, cross country ski uh, jaunt with Warren for his first his first uh, cross country skiing experience. Around the family farm. So, yep. Uh, and, um, and then it's uh, actually the cross-country skiing carriers, what are they called? Carriages? Trailers? I'm not sure what I would shuttle, call them. Shuttle uh, sled system? This specific one's called the Kinder Shuttle Sled System. Which we got from a cousin of Nick's um, who lent it to us. Uh, it, it's um, a product that's made by Wilderness Engineering, and it's done a great job for us. But anyway, it's so convenient. You can wrap your you know, baby up, swaddle them up. It helps if they can sit up. Everything is easier when the baby can sit up on its own. Um, but as you can see, Warren's kind of just dressed the nines and and cold weather garb. And uh, I can't see it in these pictures, but I'm sure his little red panda is somewhere in in mm -hmm. the the Kinder shuttle. Um, but uh, a Thule also makes a, a very expensive um, cross country skiing shop. I think it's like a thousand dollars. This one is like four hundred dollars. Um, definitely worth it if you are a big time cross country skier, um, and that's something you enjoy. Um, but uh, one, yeah, definitely the uh, ability to keep your baby warm in this is uh, really really great. Um, and then our our Kinder shuttle kind of fogs up sometimes, so um, I'm not quite sure if it's the uh the the uh the puller of that sleigh who cares more about warren seeing the views but we often unzip if it's not too cold you can unzip the um the carriage door so that warren can have a the baby can have a clear clear view of the beauty also ours is from the 80s so i think it just has lots of years of misuse and scratches not misuse, but good experiences <laughs> uh -huh. yeah oh tell uh yeah nick's cousin has claimed that he's taken the baby out like a six we, month old. We got this from my cousin who claims that uh, he used it out on like the mountains up in Breckenridge, Colorado, and his kids were like six months old. Yeah, so, so we're like, we're they're big, they're big cross country sh uh, shoes to fill for sure. <laughs> so uh, we don't do any of that, but we're working our way up to it. 
So, and then uh, Viking also, the Burley uh, is probably the most well-known brand. Uh, we got ours again, hand me down and uh, very grateful for it. Um, and uh, you'll want to practice and see if the baby even likes uh, going in it. Um, we just started off when Warren was really little with him in the uh, car seat. You can kind of put the car seat inside and strap that in and then the Burley's in there as well. Um, so uh, yeah, you can try that. And then now that Warren's bigger, I bet this summer we'll probably not have him in this car seat. So uh, definitely consider the temperature and wind. You're working hard to haul that little baby, but they're just kind of hanging out for the ride. So uh, any cold, cold wind um, that comes through, you know, they're just gonna be a lot colder than you are. So good to bundle up, have some long sleeves on. Um, and then also I recommend practicing uh, setting up the Burley, uh, attaching it to uh, whatever bikes you want to use. Um, Nick and I are lucky to be the same height as each other, so we can kind of switch bikes uh, whenever we want. Um, and then, you know, trade off on the Burley carrying, but that's not how it is for everyone. So uh, it's much nicer to figure that out while the baby's taking a nap at your house than finagling for a half hour of, you know yeah probably. It, it definitely takes a minute to kind of figure out the, for the very first time how to connect that to the back of your bike but uh yeah. you practice enough times and then it'll it's easy yep and then um as all activities that take you far away from your car you know pay attention you'll want to um be cognizant of the timeline when does the baby want to eat when should you change um has the baby pooped that day are you going to have a blowout um, these are all things to think about um and pack lots of extra diapers, outfits, et cetera. Um, yes. And then uh, one nice thing is, is if you're driving to a location to uh, to bike with baby, uh, also bring your stroller. If the baby really hates the burly, then you can always whip out that stroller and, uh, you know, kind of not have a wasted commute, or at least it doesn't feel wasted to you. All right. <clears throat> now we'll talk about uh, swimming. I know it's not totally like a, you know, crazy outdoor recreation activity, but it is still a lot of fun. Um, Especially in Michigan. Absolutely. There's nothing like uh, nothing like uh, taking the little one out to a great lake. Mm -hmm. uh, so first things first, uh, safety. A lot of this may seem like obvious common sense, but it bears repeating. Uh, never take your eyes off the baby. Uh, always keep them in something that floats and make sure they feel safe too. Uh, lots and lots of sunscreen. Sunscreen is very important, especially if your baby is as bald as Warren, uh, 15 months old, and he's still pretty bald. So, uh, so this summer we'll probably still be putting a lot, a lot of sunscreen on him. Uh, rule of thumb applies: start small. So try it out in the kiddie pool first, and then maybe a regular pool. And if your baby seems to enjoy it, uh, try it out on the Great Lake. Um, you can see that bottom picture there was taken out at Howland State Park, and. Uh, um, to be honest, Warren is rather indifferent when it comes to being out on the big water. Uh, he really loves baths, but when the temperature is kind of cold, it's it's a different story. Uh, he's not really one to cry or complain, but we can tell when he's not really thrilled about something. Uh, so that kind of brings us to our next point. Uh, wa always watch the temperature. Um, babies don't really care for the thrill or novelty of polar bear swims like some of us might. Uh, but there's not much point in taking them out in water that's less than a comfortable temperature for them. Um, that being said, a little cool down in Lake Michigan on a hot summer day can be a, a great experience for everyone. Um, so I, the general rule is, uh, you know, hang out out there with them for as long as they're having a good time. And then uh, when they're not feeling it anymore, then call it a wrap. And safety first. Safety first. We talked about that. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Good. Just worth restating, I guess. Restating. Safety first. Safety first. So some gear suggestions that we have. Uh, so if you want something to carry the baby in, uh, we really like that Catan uh, baby wrap. Uh, it has like 12 different configurations as the baby gets bigger. Um, and then I recommend that. I mean, it depends on your baby's development. We probably put Warren in the Osprey too early. We were really excited about that um, because they do get heavy in the front. Uh, but I would say for under six months, that worked really well for us on hikes. And then... Uh, we really love that Osprey Poco Plus uh, for six plus months. It has a nice uh, sun shield. Uh, I would love to crowdsource some sort of mosquito netting. Um, we've found that the mosquito repellent white baby wipes have worked really well, but um, 
I don't know, mosquitoes love me. Hopefully Warren has inherited Nick's uh, either doesn't get bit or doesn't really complain about it uh, mentality that I don't have. Um, so if anyone knows a good method to like wrap the baby in mosquito netting while in uh, Poco Plus, I would love to hear it. And then uh, something to put the baby in so they can't crawl away. This um, California beach and uh, beach pop and go has been really great. You can actually also fit in it um, as an adult with the baby if you're uh, trying to escape the sun on a hot day on the beach. Um, it has a zipper. It's like a kind of just a really big pack and play or just a cool shaped pack and play. Um, and it folds up really nice and easily. I've done it so like on a solo hike with Warren to the beach. Um, and uh, I feel like another thing is you can um, you can undo it and set it all up one handed while like while the baby on your hip. I feel like that <laughs> that bears repeating. Um, yeah, and then we had mentioned um, the uh, um, Kinder Shuttle for cross country skiing. Um, and uh, what, is, what is, oh yeah, and then the Burley B for uh, biking. And then I've actually really fallen in love with some great um, Instagram accounts for um, for parents who like to take their kids outdoors. And I find them extremely inspiring. And when Nick and I are like, how do we make sure Warren stays warm enough in the mm -hmm. winter? Um, you know, that I kind of turned to them They're I feel like a lot of Canadian, Canadian families. So kind of similar weather to what we have in Michigan. Um, and so I have them listed right there. I really have just been very impressed and inspired by, by those accounts. So. All right, now we'll talk about uh, just some general travel tips uh, for like road trips and things like that. Um, at the time of this recording, uh, we have yet to fly on a plane with Florent with Warren. Although we did just book our first flight, so we did book our a first flight with Warren mm -hmm. uh, earlier tonight. So uh, stay tuned. Um, but as of right now, we can't talk. We can't kind of attest to how that's gone. Uh, but we have road tripped with Warren extensively. Uh, so we can at least kind of share what's worked with us and what hasn't and uh, talk about some of our misadventures. Um, if your baby falls asleep on long car rides or if they're generally content, uh, consider yourselves very lucky uh, and take advantage of it. Um, for us, for the most part, Warren is a pretty good traveler, especially when he was between the months of like one and four months old. Mm -hmm. um, both of us were blessed to be able to take a lot of uh, parental leave off. And so that window kind of lined up at the same time. Uh, so we kind of thought, well, heck, let's take, uh, you know, we took spontaneous trips to the UP, down to North Carolina, uh, Indiana Dunes National Park. Uh, we went to Pennsylvania and hiked the North Country Trail there. Um, and it all kind of worked out because Warren was a pretty amiable traveler. But Yeah, if your baby is not a satisfied traveler, um, you can always have one parent sit in the back. Uh, that worked, I feel like medium well when Warren was upset uh, probably just made Nick and I feel better um, for us I don't know if this is even true or not but we really felt like there might have been a trend with the sun going down like Warren didn't like the evenings if it was daytime it was fine if it was like pitch black night it was fine but something about the, the evening hour uh, he really was unsettled by um, and so yeah if one of us would sit in the back with him and try to entertain um, for the longer trips, uh, it's nice to, um, break them up with some, um, yeah, lots of breaks for food, for, you know, resting, um, uh, not in the lane position for the baby. Uh, if you're breastfeeding, uh, that's a nice time to get some relief and then, um, yeah, get, getting that face time. I found, uh, especially when I went back to work that the longer the trip, the harder it was for me just because, um, it's hard to be not, I don't know, and looking at your baby. Um, so I, I tried to spin it a lot as like, well, if Warren probably really wants to see our faces more and play with us. But I think it was probably just me. I don't think Warren cared. I think he enjoyed the nap. Well, it's 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 a good point, though. If you're uh, if you're taking a long weekend, you don't want 17 of those hours to be all drive time in the car for, you know, one and a half days of, of a good time. So just be considerate and uh, um just remember the longer you go, um, you know, uh, just remember how far you are from your, you know, your safety net and your support group. Um, yeah, 
And yeah, so I know we're beating the horse uh, a bit, but uh, you want to start small local hikes first for that general travel. Um, yeah, and then if those go well, then maybe you can find a farther, farther trailhead. Um, so that kind of segues into our next point, uh, is your vehicle reliable? Um, and we'll kind of tell a quick tangent story, but, uh, one of the worst travel experiences of Warren's life was probably, and probably Nick and I's life too. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was, was pretty up stressful. There. It was up there. Uh, we, we broke down when we were uh, near Tequamon and Falls at night in the middle of winter. It's so um, necessary. Yeah. COVID was still very much a thing. And so that kind of affected uh, tow drivers protocols uh, about riding with them. Um, so we were, you know, several hours away from our hotel. Uh, we had no heat in the car. That was part of the, the issue. Warren had a full diaper. It was past his bedtime. He was crying. Uh, not a good scene. Um, thankfully for us, um, you know, the, the kindness of Upers came through as it has time and time again. Um, Shout so. out. And that in that instance, you know, he uh, he reached out to his wife and then she drove home and they brought their personal vehicle, the tow driver mm -hmm. for us to drive all the way to St. Ignace. And then they towed our car to a body shop there and our Airbnb host let us stay an extra night. Uh, but still, it's it's no fun being stranded on the side of the road, you know, with, the with spotty cell service with a baby in the cold. Um, so, you know, before any kind of long trip or even short trips, you'll want to you'll want to make sure uh, you have a reliable vehicle and or at least, uh, you know, safety measures and things that you can do options you can take if you do break down. I feel like what was that? Twenty three and a half hour towing. Shout out. Yes, the company was called twenty three and a half hour towing. So we're so shout grateful. Out to them. So grateful. Yep. In Hulbert, Michigan. Um, uh, next, we'll talk about Airbnbs a little bit. Airbnbs are your friend. I know this is an outdoor symposium, and we'll be the first to advocate uh, free spots to pitch a tent on the side of the road instead of expensive outdoor or indoor lodging. Uh, but a lot of that stubborn resolve tends to get broken down after you have a kid. Um, Airbnbs are nice. You know, you have the whole place to yourself. You don't have to worry ups about upsetting any neighbors or getting upset by any neighbors. Uh, you have all the privacy you need. Um, for us, you know, Warren generally sleeps in the pack and play when we go places. So it's nice to put him in another in another room. And then uh, that way you still have the rest of the run of the place, you know, after they're asleep. Um, they're also nice, you know, when you come back from hikes and stuff, uh, they're clean. You can take showers, uh, you know, you can clean up uh, Warren's, you know, their food utensils. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient. Um, hotels are OK, too. But uh, you do have to think about the logistics. Sometimes we didn't. Um, the first few times we've gotten a hotel room with Warren, uh, it was like on a long road trip and it was kind of just like a pit stop, just kind of a pit stop. You know, we'd arrive at like 11 p.m. or midnight. And so the hotel is really just kind of reduced to a place to, to sleep for a few hours before continuing on our way. Um, this past New Year's Eve, uh, we decided to rent a hotel room. Uh, just for the long weekend rather than an Airbnb. And um, one thing we didn't really take into consideration was uh, it's all one room. And so when Warren would go to bed at, you know, 7.30 Eastern, which is 6.30 Central time where we were, uh, we kind of all have to go to bed. So, you know, New Year's Eve, we went to bed at 6.30 p.m. We, uh, tried, we tried to stay awake. Turned the TV <laughs> off, didn't watch any bowl games. We just, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, that's and that was the way it was. We got some great sleep though. <laughs> I will say. And on the on the plus side, you know, we were the first ones at the breakfast buffet at like five in the morning, and then we were kind of out the door by six thirty, seven o'clock to do adventures. So, uh, but but think about that, you know, when you're considering a hotel. Um, and Taryn mentioned this on any kind of road trip. Uh, you want to give the baby uh, and, and yourselves lots of breaks. Um, you know, don't expect to get anywhere too fast. Um. You know, like a lot, a lot of the trips you've taken, Warren really needed to to get out and kind of stretch his legs or, you know, we'd change his diaper. Um, mom might need a, a breastfeeding break, you know, every couple hours. So um, just kind of uh, budget budget that when you're kind of considering the time of, you know, time logistics of how long it's going to take to get places. Oh, in conclusion, we just want to say a uh, big thank you to our um our friends and our families, um, and our parents, especially who shared our love, uh, or shared their love 
for the outdoors with us. Um, and I think that that kind of ties into a really great piece of advice. Um, lean on the people that you're close to to help make things feasible and easier. We certainly couldn't do, you know, more than half the things that we're able to do with Warren without, you know, so much support. Um, and we owe a lot to the people who are close to us. So we're very grateful. Um, and I think, you know, the point of this, and Nick and I talked about before presenting, we really just want you to feel like, oh, those two can do it. We can too. Um, you know, we can start small and, and we can just try some things out. Um, it really uh, lifts the spirit to be outside, um, especially just in such a strange era that we're in. And then also to be new parents, I think getting outside is just so good for your mental and physical health. Um, and it's just a great, great bonding thing to do with your kid. Uh, we both really enjoyed an active outdoor lifestyle before Warren. Um, so it's been a real joy to get to have that um, continuing on into parenthood. Um, and then we also recognize that we're dual income one kid. Um, so we have a lot of flexibility um, on, you know, certain activities. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think you want to talk to. Um, yeah, I just want to say like, uh, I know we don't have a whole lot of experiences, um, but uh, really the best advice we can give is, uh, you know, I think outdoor lifestyles are important. And, um, you know, we had a lot of the questions we had before we were, well, we were thinking about having kids is, uh, you know, how much of our previous lifestyles are we going to have to sacrifice? Uh, what activities are feasible with a baby? Um, how do we know when we're pushing too far? Um, and the best way to answer those questions is to just go out and try it. Um, just so go out and have fun and keep the and, bar uh, low and and make sure your kids are having even more fun. So awesome. Thanks so much for talking with us today. All right. Thanks for tuning in.